this is an interesting exchange here on Sky News. Don't know who these uh, presenters are. Uh, they invited on Dr. Miriam Francois. I don't really know who she is, a journalist and a filmmaker. Uh, it was interesting just to see this play out because the U.S. and U.K. now have expanded their attacks on uh, Yemen in an attempt to, um, I guess, uh, debilitate uh, the Houthis from attacking the uh, trade um, uh, routes that uh, they've been doing um and they'll said they'll they will stop when there's a ceasefire that's what that's said, what they're saying publicly so they could tr the u.s could try that's that said the entire time or they could bomb them well i mean that's the uh the, the, UK. the u.s is all in and not uh you know if you're not going to call for a um uh, a ceasefire when you see a wholesale slaughter of civilians uh it would be bad form to do it because yeah. of uh inflationary pressures uh, put on uh, international trade routes. But the problem that I think the U.S. and the U.K. government have is that this is not, it is coupled to a, another thing that's happening that they have influence on. This is, you cannot look at the Houthis as attacking trade routes um, in a vacuum because it's not happening in a vacuum. It's what everyone wants you to do. It, but that that's exactly the point. And uh, that's what's interesting about this is that um, uh, these news presenters have a tough time sort of presenting it in that way. To Francois, I mean, there are many who are saying that, frankly, the Biden administration should have acted sooner and faster, that hundreds of billions of dollars uh, has been put at risk because the Houthis have held uh, this area in the Red Sea um, at ransom. Sorry, so just let me get this straight, Yelda. So we are bombing the poorest, one of the poorest countries in the world that has been under a humanitarian blockade. There has been famine. These people have been decimated. And we are bombing them because a couple of guys in dinghies in support for the Palestinians who are having a genocide committed against them. They're objecting to that. And we're bombing them. Come on now. I mean, well, this it, is I just an insane world for us to even think. I'm so sorry you Amazon packages are delayed i really am like i wish mine came on time but you know <laughs> genocide guys genocide there are two mothers a day dying in gaza right now it's 109 days into a conflict in which a humanitarian crisis has been declared to the world but day by in, the way day out. Uh, by the way dr francois there are many who are yemen watchers who are who monitor and follow the houthis who say this is doing wonders for their branding actually mm -hmm. that it isn't just the palestinian cause that they're focused on so Pause it, pause it. I mean, the, the, I have no doubt that the Houthis, um, and uh, I think, you know, everything I've read suggests that they're having a hard time governing and that this is, um, that uh, engaging in a, a conflict like this uh, drives um, their legitimacy. national, yeah. yeah, their legitimacy and sort of nationalism, uh, nationalistic fervor. Um, yes. That, of course, that dynamic exists in every time a uh, government launches a uh, conflict in some fashion. Um, but the bottom line is, like, this is all, this was all to be expected. The reason why the Biden administration moved in uh, naval ships early on was because they knew this conflict has the ability to expand. And so you have a choice. You either roll with the expansion of that conflict or you try and um, end the conflict. And the Biden administration has made their choice, which is we're not gonna try and end the conflict. I mean, why does, I'm sorry, but why does that give the Houthis more legitimacy? Why? It's, it's not just, it's not just that they're the engaging. Stage. It's not just that they're engaging in a war or, or in a conflict. It's the fact that they're showing solidarity for the Palestinian people. When you see how other Arab countries and people in those nations feel about Israel's genocide of the Palestinian people, you can understand why who, the Houthis domestically might see it as a 
prime opportunity for them to show and thumb their nose at U.S. imperial power, which I got to like, I, I hate to break it to white British and American anchors in this country who are cozy and make millions of dollars. But the United States is not viewed with much reverence in the region that we have been indiscriminately bombing for decades and decades and decades. And that Israel is like a colonial outpost for our interests in that region. Yeah, they don't have a ton of legitimacy there or we don't. So the Houthis doing this is actually completely logical, even though it's painted as some sort of like Arab barbarism. It's, if this if a genocide was happening in our backyard to one of our allies or other people, I mean, look at how we responded in solidarity with sending weapons to people in Ukraine because Russia is in opposition to us. These are these are this is how geopolitics works. But it but 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 white people get to be rational actors on the on the international stage. And then brown people or Arab people or Muslim people, they're all irrational. Yeah. The people that are supporting Disrupting the bombing trade. of the Houthis. Yeah, it is disgusting that you people are saying, well, what about the uh, or might be inflation or rise in shipping? You know how many people are starving in Gaza right Half now? Half a million. It's 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 absolutely disgusting to be called like pro terrorist or something like that. Kiss my ass. I mean, uh, the let, let's put it this way. If the Houthis were disrupting uh, international trade routes and were firing on civilian vessels, and whether you think they're sincere or not in there, right. I mean, uh, which is just a bizarre way to look at this, whether you think they're sincere or not, if they were doing this in the total absence of this Israeli assault on Gaza, if there was nothing else going on and they were doing it because they were driving, uh, they're trying to drive their own sort of like uh, public perception, uh, the, the quality of their public perception in Yemen. No one would be talking about it. Yep. If the U.S. was bombing, we would be like, wait, you, we shouldn't be doing this. Boom, that would be the end of the story. Like there would be nobody... The the it would you have a coalition being able to be built because the Houthis are just acting out for some reason against tr uh, shipping. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's the thing is that the 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 whole point is that the Biden administration have completely opened themselves up to this expansion of this regional conflict because of their failure to in any way attempt to rein in Israel because it is not an attempt to say we're going we're. We're sending a letter to your manager, and we just put to whom it does concern. I mean, that is that is the point. Uh, continue on with this. Who are Yemen watchers who are who monitor and follow the Houthis who say this is doing wonders for their branding, actually, mm -hmm. that it isn't just the Palestinian cause that they're focused on. So call a ceasefire now and end the positive branding. If you want to stop the Houthis doing what they're doing, then call a ceasefire you believe right that now. The Houthis would, would stop doing what they're doing. If they have literally said that that's why they're doing what they're doing. They have not previously blocked those routes. For Pause it real quick. You know, I'm not going to take it off, but like the idea that America Britain have the ability to um, vet others for sincerity mm -hmm. in this sort of conflict is ludicrous. <laughs> no, no, ahead, the, 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 we, the, all, state actors that are white and are powerful are rational. Um, state actors that are poorer and Arab, we have to, I, we really, have to yeah. assess their moral character. Yep. Yeah the reason except this one so yes i do and i also think the west needs to start to understand that you cannot just go around playing cowboys in the world there are consequences to your actions you cannot just go around bombing people's countries ignoring international law and expect no repercussions for every cause there is a consequence and just because you don't like a couple of guys trying to resist i mean these the fact are that this is now prescribed terrorists uh, sure the according to western governments well, they are also according governments. to the yemeni yeah. people because yeah, which is the Saudi been, back government, yeah. which is essentially our. People. But but yeah. the Yemenis who live, uh, you know, under Houthi rule, talk mm -hmm. about the fact that this group continues uh, to terrorize them as well. Yeah, that's, that's it. I'm no fan of the Houthis, apart from when they're blockading in favor of a ceasefire, which should have been called a long time ago. Fifty five thousand people are dead in Gaza right now. There are over sixty thousand people injured with no access to food, water, aid. How dare we? 
have a conversation about trade when there are children right now being treated without anesthetic. Well, the there are things that, that require us to make some sacrifices, the, and this would be I mean, one they, of them. They do have the global economy, global markets hostage. Good for them. Bill Brother. <laughs> Good for them. It, it, Cease fire now. Cease fire right. now. <laughs> We're going to have to uh, leave it uh, uh, there. That guy had a great retort. But here's the point, is that if you, if you are one of those people who believe that the uh, responsibility for the tens of thousands of civilian casualties uh, in Gaza is squarely on Hamas and not a function of Israel, uh, then that same logic makes it impossible for you to blame the Houthis for um, for the uh, them firing on these civilian vessels. I mean, the same logic w would make it impossible because, of course, the Houthis uh, are doing this in their best interest to do so. That's the argument, right? That they're being opportunist. Okay, great. Take well, the opportunity I mean, away from like them. the. Uh, the if, if everything just runs in such a, like there's, if there is no such thing as like a moral culpability, but A happens, then B necessarily has to happen, C necessarily has to happen, um, then if you're going to apply that type of logic to the wiping out of, of like housing and resources and hospitals and universities, uh, and the desecration of cemeteries in Gaza to Hamas. There's no agency by Israel. H how do you not come to the same conclusion with the Houthis? Why, why do, why do Houthis, why, just, just think for a second, just have empathy for one second. Why do you think the Houthis or people in Yemen or in the Middle East don't like Israel or the United States? Why? It's actually incredibly rational because of decades of freedoms. bombings yeah i mean we're back to that we are back to that yeah and it's not it's insincere it's all just because they hate the west for our freedoms right. we're back to newsweek post like a week after 9 11. do you support the taliban they're lying when do they you say support they don't care al qaeda about, you think I, pirates care about palestinians they're pirates not palestinian well, lovers instead of looking at the structural issues of the world superpower and the way that we've conducted ourselves i would like to spend my time assessing the moral character of extremist groups or just like uh, militant groups that come up and crop up because of our actions in the region. Like this is the arrogance, honestly, of Western empires. And they, it's it's complexity for us in our indiscriminate action actions, but uh, black and white moral assessments of terrorism on the other end. And in yeah. the end, all you are is a racist. It's That's wild. all you are. It's wild to see how many people, even on the uh, nominal progressive left, uh, the second we start bombing somebody, uh, the rationalizations come out and the patholo uh, pathologizations of the left come out and all of a sudden it's, oh, you're not, you're not grown up enough to understand why we are all of a sudden throwing missiles at another population instead of just, you know, giving the missiles to the Saudis to do it. Um. One final story uh, before we go into the uh, fun half. Um, apparently, there was an Israel-EU meeting on uh, the future of Gaza. And the Israelis have, I mean, it gets reported like they have no plan for Gaza. They seem to have a plan for Gaza. And that is to uh, make it as impo life as impossible as it could possibly be for the Palestinians living there. Their plan is to basically level um, uh, what is there, to get rid of all the um, uh, cultural institutions, to get rid of the health institutions, um, to get rid of all these things and maintain either uh, military control by having uh, a military there, or just again, control it in the way that they've been controlling it as an open air prison. But this point now, uh, with this level of starvation, they're uh, they're exerting the control by um, withholding things like food and water and whatnot. Um, they uh, the EU met with um, Israel's um, I guess ambassador to the EU, Joseph Borrell Fontels, the EU's top diplomat. 
met in Brussels uh, and said that it appeared that the two sides were having two different conversations. Um, Are Palestinians European in these conversations, nations, by no, the way? Of course not. No? Okay. European nations were resolute that sustainable lasting peace must include Palestinian statehood, an option that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel has doubled down on opposing in recent days. Israel's foreign minister, Israel Katz, presented to Europeans a plan involving an artificial island off of Gaza's coast. So the plan, after the closed door meeting with European uh, Union ministers in Brussels, I mean, I just found this laughable. I feel uh, like it, th this sort of stuff feels like it's meant to be insulting. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is meant to be like, let's just g do anything and uh, stall here and just show how feckless everyone is until they actually decide to get serious with us and they won't uh at the closed door meeting with european ministers in brussels mr katz this is incidentally from the new york times israel's foreign minister led a fi left officials confused when he screened a video which dates to at least 2017 about a pet proposal of his to create an artificial island off the gazan coast he said it could be used to inspect cargo and passengers arriving by sea into the territory. This is according to an Israeli official and six European diplomats and officials familiar with the meeting. Afterward, Mr. Burrell said of the uh, island planned, this didn't have much to do with what we were discussing. So the point is, there is no partner for peace on the Israeli side. They show up and they just do this basically joke presentation. Um as a way of basically telling the eu go f yourself mm -hmm. we our one negotiation um we will have our uh you know prison checkpoint we're gonna build an artificial island to do it okay call it a Ga gaza traz <laughs> it's sort of like elon musk can like actually send them to mars yeah exactly right i mean it's our land, so... I'm going to seastead for the Palestinians, get uh, Peter Thiel involved. I'm, I'm just, you know, we, we... Thank you, for the U.S. presidents, over the past few decades for your appeasement of this fascist far-right government. I mean, you... It's not just Joe Biden, and the, he is genocide Joe, blood on his hands, whatever. But, like, they have led us to this moment, the, the United States government and, yeah. and U.K. governments collectively. You could tell quite a story about all the... Pre I mean, obviously Clinton and... Uh, but Obama taking pictures with Saeed and knowing chapter and verse on the Palestinian struggle. <laughs> and then, uh, you know... Capitulating the way he did, and despite you know Netanyahu making him uh, the big bad anyway, I mean, yeah, it's horrible. All right, we're going to take a break. Head into the uh, fun half of the program. Just a reminder: it's your support that makes this show possible. You can become a member by going to jointhemajorityreport.com. When you do, you not only get the free half free of commercials, you get the fun half. You can uh, IM us. Um, we always could use members. Um, certainly as of late, it's been a little bit of a, uh, a dry spell in terms of like uh, folks having some financial issues. And um, We should figure out some kind of members only, app only content. Yeah. Uh, really? We definitely need to do that more um, uh, on the app. Like I was looking at the uh, Dark Vault stuff. If we can find that and release some of those. Uh, but uh, your support really makes this show possible. You can become a member. Join the majority report.com. Also, don't forget Just Coffee. Just Coffee.coop. Fair trade coffee and hot cocoa. <laughs> and you can get the majority report blend. Use the coupon code majority, get 10% off. Just Coffee.coop. Emma. ESVN. Yesterday, Bradley and I went into the divisional round this weekend. What an incredible uh, weekend of football. We spoke a little bit about what the root of the Bills' problems are. Uh, we talked a bit about the 49ers and if there's concern for them going forward. The Lions' incredible uh, victory. The Ravens being dominant. YouTube.com slash ESVN show. Really, I mean, for me at least, the NFL playoffs, the four teams left, best four teams in football, and I'm not a Mahomes hater. Like, I don't even care if he gets his third ring. He's that great. So, fun, fun, uh, 
fun times ahead. There's the also a fun weeks. thing going on with ESVN as far as like data analysis and um, betting and psychology mm -hmm. because if you look at both Bradley and Emma's uh, results, uh, not great. Not and, great. Yeah, I think if everybody did that. And, hey, uh, I went two up, and one last week, folks. I went two up, and one. Yeah, well, Emma has her own like mental calculations, but the numbers show <laughs> that it's not been good over the course of this year, and maybe people shouldn't be uh, betting money on stuff. But anyway, even people that know a lot about sports. <laughs> well, it's not money. <laughs> it's a competition between us. No one. <laughs> I don't put at, money on my bets. No one here would ever <laughs> that bet money. Reason. That's disgusting. The seven okay. and twenty-one Emma Viglin goes up against the nine and eighteen Bradley. That Elsa. is. Dis wow. this slanderous. It was not true. Not true. Matt, really uh, bringing it today. It's funny. Yeah. I, I'm very anti betting, so that's you know also the. Other I thing. mean, that's our that's the clash. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand. You're right. Like you ended up being right because this gambleification of sports, it's a joke. Everything you watch is now like, yeah, hollowing out the everything. Yep. Yep.